Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to transform data with dplyr, a commonly used package that's associated with R and R Studio. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So I'm here inside R Studio and what we're going to do here is we're going to do something called like, you know, data wrangling, data cleaning, whatever you want to call it. And our goal here is that we have these questions right here on the screen in green and we're going to try to answer these questions using some basic techniques that are packages, excuse me, functions that are found in dplyr. And so we're going, like I said, we're going to answer these questions and let's just take a look at them first. So you can see some of these questions are very basic. Which country has the smallest population? Which country has the largest? How has India's population grown? Uh, what is the population of a country with a life expectancy of greater than or equal to uh, uh, 81? What is a country's life expectancy uh, over with over 100 million people in the country and a life expectancy less than 45, etc.? Now, the data that we're going to be using is something called a uh, gap minder. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to load our packages like so. And then we're going to take a, a look at our actual data right here. And so here it is right here. Notice how I use the glimpse function. The glimpse function is, of course, another one of the many uh, functions found within the dplyr package, if you will. So here's a quick look at the, the uh, data. So you can see I have seven, about 1,700 rows, six columns. And here right, are all of my different variables right here. So we're looking at things like the name of the country, the name of the continent, the year. So what's happening is that data was collected every five years from these different countries over time. And so the main things that were collected was life expectancy, the population size, and the GT GDP per capita. So it's kind of like a, could be almost like a time series type of analysis if you wanted to do that, because you have repeated data collection from the same source. And so this is what our data is made up of, if you will. And so once you have an idea of what kind of data you have, you have to start thinking about what kind of questions do you want to answer. The most important thing really is not the coding or any of those things along, along those measures. What's really most important is what kind of questions do you want to get answers to? Because you can always find uh, somebody who can do the code for you. You can find examples of the code online, etc. That's not the hard part. The hard part is conceptualizing exactly what it is you want to know. And so in our example right here, we're going to start with which country has the smallest population. But one thing I do want to show you before we do that is how you can select verbs using dplyr. So when you're using dplyr, it has this really, really convenient function called select, which allows you to pull only the variables that you want for your analysis. So I'm going to show that to you right now first. So I'm going to put that right here. So here's the, or the data or here's the code. Now, notice what you're doing here. First, we're calling Gapminder. That is the name of our data set. And then notice the use of this little pipe. That's telling you that you're going to do something next. And so what's happened is first, we're going to call Gapminder. Then inside our after we call Gapminder, we're going to select these variables right here uh, to look at. That's what we're going to do. So select is kind of similar to what you might find in a SQL. Allows you to pull only the variables you want when you're doing your analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And so when I do that, notice how it automatically just pulls these four variables that I, I selected, continent, or excuse me, country, continent, population, and life expectancy. That's the beauty of this. So we're going to see this several times. And the beauty of using these pipes is that you can just keep adding more and more pipes and keep doing more and more analysis in one straight piece of code, if you will. Now let's go to our first question. Which country has the smallest population? All right, now, to answer this, I have to find a way to sort my data so that the, the country with the smallest population is, of course, going to be at the top. And so what function I need here is the arrange function. Let me show you how that works. So I'm just going to put this in here, copy it over. All right, so here's what we got. This part, you've already seen all of this before. So we've already done this before. Um, now, 
Notice also we also have a population in year also here. And notice this second pipe right here. And so what we're doing now is we're calling Gapminder. Then we're selecting these four variables inside the parentheses. Then we're sorting by population. And so now I just run this piece of code and we get our output right here at the bottom. So you can see country, continent, population, year. So you can see right here, this is the country with the smallest population in this data set. And we even know what year that was as well because I added that as well in my select statement. So Sao Tome and Principe had the smallest population and that year was 1952. So that's what we're doing right there. So you can see that what's really more important is being able to determine what it is you would like to know. Now we're gonna do a little bit of the opposite. Which country has the largest population? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the code for this. And so I copy this and I'll paste it right here for you. And so notice this time I'm not selecting. If you don't use the select function, you're going to get all the variables coming back to you. Now, we've also already used the arrange function, but notice inside the arrange function, we use this uh, function called dis, D-E-S-C, which means descending. So now what's going to happen is the largest population will be at the top, and then there will be a decrease in value going all the way down. And so I highlight all this, because I, I, I only want to run this piece of the code, press Control Enter, and so you can see I got all the variables this time because I did not use the select function. And so you can see that the country with the largest population is of course China. And you can see data collection stopped in 2007 and they were at about 1.3 billion at that time. All right, so now we're going to go to this next question right here. How has India's population grown? So I know that my data is times time data, time series data, where I've collected data over several years and um, now I want to see okay how has things grown in India so what we're going to do now is we're going to add something new and that is the filter function so here we go notice I'm not using the select function again that means I'm going to get all of my variables I'm still arranging things by population because I want to I want to see when India was the largest and so I use a second pipe here and then I'm using filter. Filter allows you to filter your data based on the criteria. And for us, it's gonna be the variable country and specifically where you have the double equal sign is gonna be India. So it's gonna pull all of the data related to India, only India, and it's going to arrange it by population. So if I had to put this in simple English, first I'm calling Gapminder. Then I'm arranging everything in Gapminder by population and then I only want data that is related to the country India. That's what's happening here. Whoops, excuse me. Control enter. All right. And so you can see I have my information right here. And so it makes sense that in 2007, the last year data was collected for this data set, India had its largest population at 1.1. And so if we were doing data visualization, we could graph this now and we could show you how India's population has grown over time or whatever we want to graph. And that's one of the benefits of understanding how you can you know, rearrange and, and transform data. Again, we're not doing any complicated analysis. We're just learning how to pull data for very simple, specific purposes. That's all we're learning here. Okay, now let's take it to a little bit of a more challenging level. What is the population of countries with, I should say, a life expectancy greater than or equal to 81. Of course, I know I spelled that wrong. So let's take a look at that one. So we want to find countries where the life expectancy is greater than, greater than or equal to 81. So watch what we do in this line of code. We're still using the filter function. So Gapminder, and then after we call Gapminder, arrange by population, and then we want to filter for life expectancy that is greater than or equal to 81. That's what's happening here. So the filter function can be used for many different things. You can find text specifically, or you can also find numbers if you desire to. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all this. And you can see I have my information right here. 
So it looks like it's a seven by six. So only seven countries have a life expectancy that is greater than 81. And of course, we even sorted it by um, population. So you can see Japan is there uh, several times, Austria, Switzerland, etc. That's how it is. Now again, we don't have to sort by population. We just chose to. Because remember, if we go back here, what is the population of countries with a life expectancy greater than or equal to 81? So we have their population and we have their life expectancy. And we just happen to sort it by population. Now, let's move. I think we're almost done here. Now, this one is going to use, going to use the filter function again, but it's going to have multiple criteria inside it. So which countries have a population over 100 million and a life expectancy less than 45? So let's go ahead and show you how this is done. So here's my code right here. So again, we're calling Gapminder and we're arranging by population and then country. So that's two criteria right there. And then we're going to filter by population that's greater than, you know, I believe it was 100 million and life expectancy less than 45. So I go ahead and highlight this. And you can see that there are five countries that meet this criteria. China met it twice, once in 1962, the other time in 1952. And India has met this criteria three times in 1952, 1957, and 1962. So you can see right there the populations, the life expectancies, and also the GDP, GDP per capita. Now, again, remember we stopped using the select function. That's why we're getting all of the variables. And so again, you can add as many criteria as you want, and you can find some very nuanced, uh, what they, I think the term they use is granular, granular data when you really know what you want to look for. And that's the main thing is really knowing what you want to look for. Okay, now, what is the log of per capita GDP? Now, the, the problem with per capita GDP is that it doesn't have a normal distribution. It could be uh, really, really, uh, ugly. So if I just had to go ahead and just show you real quick per capita GDP. And so if you look over here to your lower right, you can see that it's really, really skewed to the right. You have a whole bunch of low values and almost nothing going the rest of the way. And the problem with this is that if you're trying to do some sort of an analysis that has the assumption of normality, this could be a serious problem. So we need to to modify this variable so that it is able to fit a more normal distribution. And one way to do that is to find the log. So if I go ahead and do this, I'll show you the code right now. We're going to use a new function called mutate. So here's what's, here's what's happening. We're going to call Gapminder and then we're going to select country, continent, population, and GDP per capita. And then we're going to mutate. And so the new name that we're going to create is called log underscore GDP. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take the log. This is the function we're using and we're going to transform GDP per capita. That's what we're going to do. So if I do all this, you can see right here that dplyr has made a new column called log underscore GDP It's right here. And so if we were to plot this, I'll do that in a second you can see that it'll have a, a, a much better shape compared to what we saw before. So let me go ahead up here in line 37. I'll just put log, okay. And if I replot this, you'll see that if I really wanted to do this, this is what it will look like. So this has a much more of a bell-shaped curve to it, still not perfect, but it's a significant improvement from what we saw previously. And so now you could use this as a dependent variable in whatever your analysis may be. And so those were the questions that, you know, we were able to answer using dplyr. Of course, there's so many more other types of questions we could have addressed that we didn't hear. But the point is, and the most important thing to remember is that it's really more about your questions than how you get the answer. Once your questions are clearly defined and you know exactly what you want, you can always find a way to get the answer. Whether you do it yourself, you find some code, for example, on Stack Overflow, you consult somebody else, whatever. The coding part is not really the difficult part. The really challenging part with doing data analysis is conceptualizing exactly what it is you want to know. 
So let me see if I can summarize what we did and conclude this video. So in this video, we learned about how to transform data using dplyr, um, a, a package that's readily available in R. And we use the Gapminder data set to demonstrate how to select ver, or how to, how to, to select uh, columns, how to uh, mutate columns or variables when we want, how to arrange columns based on a value, how to um, filter, etc. And so these tools are only as useful as your ability to determine how to use them and when, which means you must have a clear understanding of figuring out what it is you want to know. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.